Once we've designed our circuit and verified that the RTL is correct, we want to see how it will actually map to the FPGA device when it's programmed. For this, we can use the Technology Map Viewer. You can see here that there are two different versions of the Technology Map Viewer, Post Mapping and Post Fitting. Each of these directly relates to a different step of the compile process. If you think back to the FPGA design flow, during the synthesis stage, our circuit is compiled to a netlist which represents the design we've made. This netlist represents the design as a collection of generic FPGA primitives, for example, I.O. buffers, lookup tables, and registers. This is known as the mapping stage, as our design is mapped to these primitives. Once the design has been mapped, it needs to be fit on the device. Each FPGA device has a finite number of primitives which can be used, therefore the compiler needs to run a series of complex algorithms to determine exactly which physical primitives are to be used by our design. Now with a simple design, this isn't too much of an issue. Our FPGA device has over 40,000 logic elements, and our design only needs one. But if you're working close to maximum utilization, the compiler needs to be able to properly optimize the design and ensure that the circuit can be fit onto the available chip space. With these two viewers, we can look at the primitives required to implement our design before or after it has been fit onto the device. Why would you want to look at it before fitting? Well, if the fitting stage takes two hours to run, you probably don't want to run it every time you make a small change in your design. So we'll start with the post mapping viewer. Firstly, I'll simplify the module so that we're not overcomplicating things. I'll take it back to a simple AND gate and just run the analysis and synthesis stage of compilation. Now that's complete, we can take a look at the technology map post mapping. So here we have our design mapped to those primitives. I'll bring up the RTL viewer as well, just so we can compare between the two. In the RTL, you can see that we've got input ports A and B, a simple AND gate which has been labeled comb by the compiler, and then our output port. In the technology map viewer, we can see how this design is mapped to our FPGA primitives. Each port is connected to an I.O. buffer, and the logic is implemented in a logic cell. As this is only post mapping, these primitives aren't directly linked to discrete primitives on the actual device. It is just a representation of what is required to fit the design. So let's close this down and run the full compilation to allow the fitter stage to map the design onto the actual device. When we now open up the technology map post fitting, we can see that everything is a bit more complicated. What's happening here is that a full compilation of the project has taken place, and therefore Quarters has automatically assigned some pins and ground lines which were required for the FPGA to function. We can see that our design is still here and looks very similar to how it did post mapping, but these primitives are now mapped to physical ports, buffers and logic cells on the device. The rest of the design here contains things like configuration pins, clocks, and status indicators, as well as a logic cell being used to create a ground line for peripherals like the built-in ADC. These are all automatically generated by quarters to ensure that even a blank design by the user will result in a functioning FPGA device. So obviously, as your design grows, so will the technology map. It's always worth returning to this viewer once you've built upon your design, as it is a good way to get an insight into how the compiler optimizes the limited FPGA resources, even for very simple designs.